uh, with the Nasdaq now, at least at this juncture, in a bear market. The Russell in that similar territory, a large collection of small company stocks and the rest. The Dow Transports, that average, also in a bear market. That worries a lot of technicians who worry that uh, the stuff that we move, to move a lot of the stuff that, that gets the economy going, if, if we're not seeing as much activity there, it could presage a slowdown or, or worse. Not all the time, but enough of the time that it concerns a lot of the market technicians. Bob Dow on all of that uh, market watcher extraordinaire. Bob, are you worried? Have to be worried when you see this uh, decline uh, in uh, thought process and in the market itself in such a short period of time, Neil. As you know, the average stock made its high in January. Uh, most averages of the big averages made new highs again in the fall, and we've been dropping since. And now you've got concerns about the economy, the Fed meeting yesterday, as you pointed out, oil prices falling, uncertainty in D.C., liquidity, which starts to dry up because of the holidays, the algorithmic trading, as uh, the Secretary of Treasury mentioned. All of that is uh, pointed to, to, to negative uh, items. Yeah, but you mentioned that we algorithmic trading, and I, and I just found it a little audacious for the Treasury Secretary to blame that. Uh, for, uh, you know, selling. And it might, in fact, be, be, you know, exacerbating all of this. No one seems to mind when the same trading is doing that, w bidding stocks up. But I just thought that was a There's loose no thing to hang on to, part, you know? No, no question it was part of the upside as well. It's active in the market. Uh, sure. and, and, and now we've got to wait uh, a few weeks for earnings. That's, I think, the first data point that we need to grab onto to say, is the economy okay or not? We know earnings move stocks over time, Neil, and we'll get first quarter earnings here in a few weeks. And the look at the fourth quarter and the anticipation and the conference calls about what's coming will tell us a lot about whether it's justified to have the, the big sell-off that we've seen. You know, much has been made of the gap between the yield on a two-year note and a and a 10-year now, smart guys like you call that the 210 spread, and it is very narrow now, a little bit more than a tenth of a point. And uh, if it flips, uh, all of a sudden, you've, you're looking at the possibility of a recession. In fact, every time that's happened since 1975, we have gotten a recession. How much do you pay attention to developments like that, uh, and should we worry about that? No one indicator by itself uh, do we worry about, Neil, but it's a collection of things, and this is one. So if we cross that line, the fact that it's already flattened, regardless of whether it's plus 10 or minus 10, is already a yellow flag for the market. Uh, look, this cycle's not going to last forever. We will have a recession. The debate is when. My guess is it's probably not in 19, and at these prices, the market is starting to say, yeah, maybe it is in 19. So there's a point where we're going to have to have more discussion and more evidence. All right. Thank you very much, Bob Dahl. 